may have noticed the distinctive old buildings with new faces on Shangxia Jiao Road. They just undergone a facelift project six years ago. How did they look like before? Well, they looked like this. Since these arcade houses are located in the old downtown area, some of them have been destroyed or in the danger of being destroyed. These arcade houses seem to have lost their charm in the face of rapid urban expansion and random destruction of such buildings over the previous two decades. In recent years, the Cantonese and Guangdongese governments have realized the importance of these buildings to Cantonese culture and have begun already pouring millions of dollars into restoring and renovating them in special areas of the city, particularly in parts like Xiangxia Zhou. And of course, they're going to be spending millions more in the near future to make sure that future generations of both Cantonese and visiting foreigners can enjoy these buildings for themselves. During the late 19th century and early 20th century, many Cantonese merchants returned to their hometowns from the Southeast Asian countries to build their own business. They brought with them some exotic styles of architecture, and soon the Qilo building emerged. 在古时候,开起楼的人都是以商铺为主的 Qilo style first appeared on Yidu Road and the area around the Sacred Heart Stone House Cathedral these special wind and rain-proof buildings look inviting and customer-friendly and soon spread throughout the city. In most cases, these walls outside Chilo buildings are built with granite plasters, with a few exceptions of red bricks, giving them a feeling of dignity and good taste. The designers and builders of Chilo buildings were not professional architects, for common workmen. The vivid and distinctive architectural style of the Chilo building was created by those workmen using their own understanding of Western architecture and experience in construction, adopting kind of a liberal attitude. Now I mentioned earlier that the Chilo are a combination of Western classical architecture and Cantonese architecture. What do I mean by this? Well, let me explain quickly. First of all, if you look at the very bottom level, you'll of course see these big pillars that are holding the whole structure up. This is essentially the idea of the classical Greek arcade, or the sort of overhanging building over the pillars. However, these have been mixed with a more Cantonese kind of functionality. Up at the next level up, if you look, you'll notice that there is a large living area residence. Now, this not only gives you more space below for the large Cantonese crowds to walk by on the sidewalk, but it also provides a lot of living area above. And most importantly, given Guangzhou's often crazy weather where it's sunshiny one minute and raining like crazy the next minute, it provides a very convenient place to stay warm and dry as you're walking down the street. Even higher above this, you'll notice the windows. And some of these windows are absolutely gorgeous. A lot of stained glass, a lot of the ancient styles of decorations. If you look just a little bit further down, you'll even notice that the Cantonese Opera Hall is on this road in a Chilo building. And of course, the third section, right at the top of these buildings, are the actual eaves where the water washes down, the rain washes down directly onto the street keeping people below nice and warm and dry and happy. The history of commercial arcade building can be dated back to ancient Greece some 2,000 years ago. It then became popular in Europe and was introduced to the world only in recent times. Guangzhou is amongst the first coastal cities to embrace foreign culture and begin modernization. Their creative imitation and bold reform worked out the characteristics of Chilo buildings of different styles. The Gothic Revival style, which has strong vertical lines and prolonged arcade windows. Nanyang style, with one or more round holes on the parapet walls. Baroque Revival style, 
the modern style of which abandoned those complex decorations and were built in a more simple and practical way. Now, as opposed to the Cantonese-style chilo, you'll notice behind me here, we have a much more traditional, modern, classical kind of European architecture happening. You'll notice there's a lot more detail put into the grill work, the iron work, and the designs that you see in that. And you'll also notice that as you go up the building, you start to see balconies instead of just a solid face like the Tilo, where people can come out and enjoy a cup of tea and sample this nice air here. Gong like morning tea, Chilo have become not only architectural landmarks, but a part of life here. Yet, Chilo buildings are meant to be something through which people can know about Guangzhou's history. Statistics from the Guangzhou Cultural Bureau show that the city has 36 remaining Chilo streets, covering more than 20 kilometers, mainly situated in the city's Liwan and Yueshou district. 給廣州市民留下以前美好的一個童年的回憶